Monkey Boys Podcast. There was a lot of people in the medical community didn't feel like they had the proper support and they were or, or the proper scheduling or the proper guidelines. What was that like when the first wave of people started coming in? It was this unforgiving sh- shit show. I get the shit show being overwhelmed by the amount of people coming into the emergency room. But what about internal staff? Were there some sense of organization there? It's just we've been talking about how unsustainable the healthcare system was for years before even a pandemic rolled around the corner. So all that did was just clarify things we've been complaining about for 10, 20 years. It was just, so it highlighted and it really highlighted, yeah, it didn't create stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah, it was just these were problems before a pandemic. And we, it happened. We were like, and now we're eating it right now. And you had all the time in the world to prevent all this, and you didn't. All we could do is sound the alarm bells. I mean, I was a med student and resident at the time, so I was in training, so it was only so much time I can be an advocate. By the time I became a, uh, an attending, I'm pretty new as an attending, then pandemic hit. So when it came for me to witnessing all this, I just you know, presented it as it was on my social media, unvarnished. I mean, other than you know maintaining patient privacy, I just showed it where it was. I mean, you couldn't tell where it was because they didn't matter. Uh, I just wanted to show there was a citywide problem because I had unique access to many different hospital systems, unlike majority of doctors. And the reason why you ask why so many people don't do or so many doctors don't choose that lifestyle is because if you sign per diem, you don't have benefits, you don't have a regular salary. You can only get paid for the jobs you can find. And a lot of doctors need stability. They want a schedule to tell you when to go to work and everything because after years and years of training and student and whatever, adulting is really hard. It's Absolutely. already stressful enough to find an apartment if you've been a med student after being a college student, yeah. after being a high school student. Well, all your friends are probably married and having kids because they like partied out you know, the years after college. You end up saying like, oh my God, I have to like figure out an apartment, I have to figure out like, you know, how, who to settle down with. And you're going to ask me to like figure out my schedule? No, no, I'll, I'll sign full time. So throughout all that, you had the option of not working. And many people would have probably said, you know what? Fuck that. This yeah. is a complete shit show. I'm going to wait till things die down and I'll jump back in. But I mean, first of all, thank you for trying to do your part. What made you kind of want to run into the fire when you didn't have to? You had no obligation to do that. But that's exactly what you did. I mean, it feels like you're setting me up because this is like my life, though. Like, it's tr- it's true. I mean, I, I always had said and when I say setting up means I always say myself. I made a habit to always run into the fire. I'm, I always made it a habit to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. But this time you're risking your life well, and, and I, everyone around you. And you, we, at the beginning of this, we didn't even know what this really was. Sure. Should we wear masks? Should we not? Should we distance ourselves? And how fast can this kill us? There were so many questions and different symptoms for so many. They're just, the variables was just insane. It's like love, man. That's, I mean, the best thing I can describe it is it's love. You, love is a temporary form of insanity. I chose to be per diem because of love in a different aspect of my thought at the time. But you don't know unless you're put in the position in your hot seat. You can think of all the things that woulda, coulda, shoulda, wouldn't it ha- does happen. But when it actually does happen, you might surprise yourself. And for me, when I signed up to be a per diem and not a full time, I wanted the option of sitting out things and be like, you know what? I don't want to bring it home to my you know, mom who has Parkinson's disease. I don't want to bring to my you know, people I love. And nobody friends. would blame you for that. Right. That's and, totally I have understandable. To, and I have the ability to. I have I've, I've made enough money as a bartender, saved enough, you know, doing odd jobs here and there to like maybe sit out a pandemic for a few months. You know, then I get a little worried, but that's why we have, you know, um, you know, rainy day funds and stuff. But what happened was the exact opposite. And I was surprising myself after the fact. But then you can go back to the med school thing. I had no idea I wanted to be a doctor until after the fact. You can go to Steve Jobs quote on like, it doesn't make sense when you move forward trying to connect the dots. It only makes sense when you look back and like, oh, this is why I did all these things. That's mm. love. That's when you know you did something that was beyond all logic. You can think this is what I meant to do. So you follow through. But if that came to be the case, your life would be so boring if everything came exactly to how your brain planned it out. Your heart is what actually makes what makes it means to be human. When you go in knowing that it may hurt you, may kill you, but you know, you just feel like you have to. I understand if you have a good support system. In this case, like you have the PPEs and, and the, the right uh, tools to go into war. Still, I'm going to move forward, even oh, yeah. though oh, yeah. I don't have the proper support and everyone else around me is frustrated and then you're seeing bodies dropping left and right and it's hard to keep up at this point yeah i mean that's you could get traumatized from that who says i'm not 
That's mm. that's what I'm saying. Like, how do you not get traumatized? What I would feel extremely overwhelmed to live through that again. I don't know if I want to go through that again. And then I, I mean, just looking at some of the prints on their face from wearing the mask for so many hours. I mean, it's just insane what you guys do. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, you can think about it like I hate to. No, I don't want to glorify war, but you can just best describe it as how we treat our veterans, you know, like how we send them in. You know, fighting for some politics they don't find really don't quite fully agree with or whatever that may be. But we really ask of them, uh, my friends who have served, it's really because of the people they work with. They do it for their brothers. Like for you all. I can yeah. understand that. I, I mean, I'm, I want to be gender neutral. Like I, I did it for my colleagues. Uh, and I don't want to make this cliche, but I had to think about it. I definitely thought all those things. Like, why am I going in? Like, I could always sit this out. But the idea was like, you know, I had, I had some mild form of PTSD, PTSD where from March to April, I would wake up every day, <gasps> like have a fever. Yeah. Oh my God. It's like mm -hmm. saying waking up thinking you've been shot. But like in war, you get shot, you go home. You know that day of, you get shot in the moment. Like, okay, I'm going home. Here, like I had to wait 25 days until I had symptoms. Like I got exposed. Someone coughed at me. I didn't have a PP. Oh crap. But I had to wait 25 days. So after that, I had to reset the clock. And that was just horrifically like just, just got to me when I'd go to work. But then you became numb to it, which is what the, the scary part is. But I, I am lucky that I have a really good support system. I created a mantra for myself to take care of myself after my dad died when I was young. My med school days, all that was, I've always run into fires. So I was always okay to bounce back up. There is a sense of healing when you are have this autonomy. I chose to go into work. No one told me to go in. That's a huge, makes a huge difference. Hugely, huge difference. When you're full-time, which I wasn't, imagine being told to go in. Mm. Me as per diem, I was a mercenary. I was like, I want to go in. And I think that made a huge difference of like, okay, I chose this. It's, it's, I can't have anyone to blame but myself. Um, but then the, the risk reduction, I did it for my colleagues. If I chose not to go in that day, that ER would have to scramble to find someone else and they can't, they got to shut down. There's no doctor oh, because the doctor was getting sick. And if that ER shuts down, other ERs will get overwhelmed. I'm not trying to say that I was so important that if I didn't go to that work one day, the, it would fall like dominoes. I understand every piece of a cog. But every little bit counted. Yeah, if absolutely. I started to say no, what if- Tell that to the person that you were helping. Yeah. I'm sure you were everything to them. I definitely, I yeah. mean, I, I remember like getting texts, like, can you fill me in tomorrow? I'm like, oh God, that's my only day off. Yeah, uh, fine. You know, I'll go. It's just because it's a different ER and they may have different PPE that I could find to like cobble together my like my, my PPE, like Iron yeah. Man, like, oh, I'm missing a mask. <laughs> I know that, that ER might have it. And that's how you framed it. That's how I was able to go in all the time was like trying to find a good in everything. Okay, I'll go in even though I'm mm -hmm. exhausted because that ER might have a PPE that I'm missing. Because I, my mask is now eight days old. I need a new N95. Maybe that ER has a face shield because my face shield is two weeks old. Right. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's good to see this, you know, a couple of nurses that I need to catch up with, right. you know, just to say hi. Or this right. is a neighborhood with a really nice coffee shop that's down the street. I always wanted to go there. I always try to find the good in things to make me go in. And once I go in, I start working and I just in it. A silver lining. But that's, that's love. You know, you, you do something that's, that's a temporary form of insanity. You do things that even though it might hurt you in the moment, you do it anyway because your your emotions feel compel you to in a good way. And you know, we say like people to be going to love each other but not be right for each other. There is a limit. And I definitely after May of last year when everything cooled down, I set a limit for myself. I was like, okay, now the crisis is over. I'm still alive. Now with all this privilege I have by staying alive, having stayed alive the last three months by May 2020 when everything's now chill, the lockdowns took effect, I need to step back and now establish boundaries so this never happens to me again because my luck can only run so far. And that's when the part of the love, when you reassess the relationship. It's like, hey, is this healthy? Have we gotten over a hump? Can we now make sure this never happens again? Can we fight well together? I mean, it's all about human relationships, I think, that taught me that. Did you lose any colleagues? Many. Wow. Like other I mean, nurses, I, I, doctors? It doesn't, even, it doesn't even matter. If the, I have to know them personally. Yes, of course I knew them personally. The head nurse at Kings County Hospital, where I went to medical school, and I was an attending. You know, Maria, I, I know plenty of people who got sick, attendings who have stopped working, or people who've lost their jobs, and let alone the people who've died. But I mean, I don't have to know you personally like I knew Maria, for example. It's the 2,000, 3,000 colleagues that have died. They're all one of us. The, 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 the people who you know, do environmental services, the people who clean, the people who you know, are security staff, right. the people who deliver our supplies, they also got sick. Without them, we would all collapse. And all of us, as you said, played a piece in that, always showing up. When so many other people have fled New York City, I mean, people have their reasons, but you know, I, I, am not built with that. I'm not built like that. And everyone's different. My DNA said to stay yep. and just keep doing it, even if it meant I could bring it home. But I scrubbed the crap out of myself and 
got naked and you know and the hallway you know luckily everyone left and moved out so i felt comfortable <laughs> being naked and then, like got jumped in the shower and like i did hot you know hot laundry every every night and, like sacrificing my sleep so i had a new fresh pair going in over and over until we found out that it doesn't spread by surfaces <laughs> 